This is Module 5, Lesson 11. In this lesson, we'll be explaining fraction equivalents using a tape diagram and the number line. So let's start with a tape diagram. And we're going to divide it in half. And we're going to shade half. So our hole is divided into two pieces, and we've shaded one, so we've, so we've shown one half. Now we're going to divide each of these again into, small, into four smaller units. So we're going to divide this half in half, and this again. So now we have a total of four units, and two of them are shaded, so we've shown two fours but we note that it's still the same amount of shaded in area on the tape diagram. We're going to divide one more time. And now on our tape diagram, we have a total of eight units of which four are shaded. So one half, two fourths, and four eighths are all equivalent fractions showing the same area on the tape diagram. Now we're going to draw a number line under the tape diagram that's going to coincide with the tape diagram. So we're going to mark this point here as one half. The end of our tape diagram would be the beginning of our number line at zero. In the end of our tape diagram, We'll mark here as the as a whole one. So on a number line, we've shown one half. Just like we did with the tape diagram, we're now going to divide the two halves in half again. And now we have one, two, three, four pieces. So each of these is a fourth. So from zero to the first point is one fourth. From the first point to the second point is two fourths. From the middle half point to the next, we have three fourths. And we know that one whole is equivalent to four fourths. Again, as we did with the tape diagram, we're going to divide one more time. So we're going to divide each fourth again. So now we have a total of eight eighths. So each of our markers is an eighth. So this is one eighth, two eighths, three eighths, four eighths, five eighths, six eighths, seven eighths, and we know eight eighths is equal to one. Let's try another problem. Now we're going to start with a t uh, number line. And we're going to mark our zero point and our one point. And this time we're going to start by dividing the number line into thirds. So this is one third and two thirds. And we know that one would be equal to three thirds. And then we're going to divide each third into four pieces. So we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. So we've now created twelfths. So our first point would be zero twelfths, and then one twelfth, and two twelfths, and three twelfths, and four twelfths, and five twelfths, and six twelfths, and seven twelfths, and eight twelfths and 9 twelfths, and 10 twelfths, 11 twelfths, and 12 twelfths would be equal to 1. Now, we can use our number sentences to 
show the equivalence of these fractions. So let's look at these two that fall at the same point on the number line. So based on our number line, we see that 1 third is equivalent to 4 twelfths. But let's prove it with our number sentences. So if we start with 1 third and we want to decompose into smaller units, to get 4 twelfths, we would multiply both the numerator and the denominator by 4, and we get 4 twelfths. Going the opposite direction, we can start with 4 twelfths, and we can compose into larger units by dividing the numerator and the denominator by 4, and we're back to 1 third. So we can demonstrate it with our number line, and we can decompose by multiplying the numerator and the denominator by the same factor, or we can compose, making larger units, by dividing the numerator and denominator by the same number. Let's look at another one. Let's draw a number line again. We're going to mark our 0 and our 1 point. Make sure we put our arrows so we remember that it's a line. This time we're going to divide into fifths. And if we label these, one fifth, two fifths, three fifths, four fifths, and we're going to mark the point of two fifths. So this point shows the fractional part two-fifths and we want to take these two-fifths and we want to make six equal parts. Well we say we have two-fifths here so if we want to make eight equal parts we divide each of these fifths into three pieces. So now we have six equal parts. If we would continue this there would be three parts here, three parts here, three parts here. And if we started with fifths and we divided each fifth into three parts, we now have created fifteenths. So zero fifteenths, one, two fifteenths, three fifteenths, four, five, six fifteenths, seven, eight, 9 fifteenths, 10, 11, 12 fifteenths, 13, 14, and 15 fifteenths would be 1. So again, using our number, our number sentence, we started out with 2 fifths. We broke each of them down into, each fifth down into three pieces. So we decomposed into three smaller units. So we multiply each, the numerator denominator by three, and we see we end up with six fifteenths, which is the same number we got on our number line. Let's try some problem set problems. Number one says, label each number line with the fractions shown on the tape diagram. Circle the fraction that labels the point on the number line that also names the shaded part of the tape diagram. So let's look at the first one together. So we know the end of the tape diagram is zero, and the bracket tells us that the number line represents one, so we'll put that there. Then we count one, two, three, four, we've divided the whole into four pieces, so we know that each one is one-fourth. And one-fourth of, of the tape diagram is shaded, so we're going to circle the fraction that labels the same point on the number line. Okay, pause the video and try B the same way. Okay, so we, do, we mark our 0 and our 1. We count and we see that there's a total of 8 
pieces here. So each one is an eighth. And two pieces are shaded on the tape diagram. So that represents two eighths on the number line. Pause the video and try C. So let's mark our zero and our one. And we count and we see there's a total of 12 pieces. So each one of these is a 12th. So one twelfth, two twelfths, three twelfths would equal the amount shaded on the tape diagram. For number two, it says write number sentences using multiplication to show that A, the fraction represented in 1A, is equivalent to the fraction represented in 1B. So we need to go back up here and we see that 1A is 1 fourth and 1B is 2 eighths. So that's what we're going to use for A. So pause the video and do that. So we started with 1 fourth. We ended up with 2 eighths. So we are, we're making smaller units. So we're going to use multiplication. 4 times 2 is 8. 1 times 2 is 2, which gives us 2 eighths, proving that they're equivalent. For B, we're looking at 1A and 1C. So we're looking at 1 fourth and 3 twelfths. So pause the video and try B. So we start with 1 fourth. We end up with 3 twelfths. So we're decomposing into smaller units. So 4 times 3 is 12. So we also multiply the numerator by 3. And 1 times 3 is 3, proving that these two are equivalent. Number 3 says, use each shaded tape diagram as a ruler to draw a number line. Mark each number line with the fractional unit shown in the tape diagram and circle the fraction that labels a point on the number line that also names the shaded part of the tape diagram. So try 1A. All right, let's draw our number line. Mark our zero point and our one point and make marks on the number line that line up with the tape diagram. We see that we have three parts shaded. So each of these is a third and two shaded parts on the tape diagram align with two thirds on the number line. Okay, try B. Okay, drawing another number line. Sorry, that should be a one. We have six total parts. We're going to lay mark off equal to the tape diagram. So one six, two six, three six, four six, and five six. And four units are shaded on the tape diagram, which aligns with four six on the number line. Try C. Okay, our no number line again. And we see that we've divided it into twelfths. And if we count, We see 8 twelfths corresponds with the shaded sections of the tape diagram. So we've shown 8 twelfths. Moving on to number 4, it says write number sentences using division to show that the fraction represented in 3A is equivalent to the fraction represented in 3B. So going back to 3A, 
we have two thirds and then we have four sixths. So use those to do A. So starting with two thirds and ending up with four sixths. Now we want to, it says to use division. So we're going to be composing. So we're going to start with the smaller units and we want to move to the larger units. We want to end up with two thirds. So six divided by two will give us three and four divided by two will give us two, two thirds, showing that the two fractions are equivalent. For B, you're comparing three A, which is two thirds to eight twelfths for three C. So we have eight twelfths and we want to compose two larger units of two thirds. So we're going to divide to go from twelfths to thirds. I'm going to need to put make groups of four. So we're going to divide both the numerator and denominator by four. So eight divided by four is two and 12 divided by four is three, showing that the two are equivalent. 5a says partition a number line from 0 to 1 into fifths and then decompose five, two fifths into four equal lengths. So pause the video and try that one. Okay, so here's our number line. And we're dividing it into fifths. We'll mark our point two fifths, and we want from here to here to be four equal lengths. So, since we're making smaller units, we'll be multiplying. So, we have four four equal units now. So we're going to divide, multiply two times two to get four and five times two to get 10. Because if we continued this pattern, we, by dividing each of these again, we would end up with tenths. So two fifths is equivalent to four tenths. Pause the video and try B. So we're starting two fifths as a number on the number line. We're using multiple uh, multiplication to show that two fifths is equivalent to our new four tenths. And then for C, do the same thing with division. So with division, we're going to go from smaller units to larger units. So if we divide both the numerator and the denominator by two, we now go from tenths to fifths and from four shaded units to two shaded units. And that concludes lesson 11.